I don't think it comes as any surprise that I love big coastal storms. It happens to be one of the most interesting types of weather to forecast for. The first alert enhances the fact that this coastal storm is going to have some sort of impact on your day. Yeah, and several of those coastal storms Vanessa's talking about they have done historic damage in our area. In fact, we are still feeling the impacts of some of those extreme weather events. The last 11 years have brought five named storms whose intensity and devastation have forever changed the way we look at weather. Hurricane Irene in August of 2011 was downgraded to a tropical storm just before it made landfall in New York City. But with 65 mile an hour winds, it was the largest storm to hit our area in 25 years. And that's where we start our extreme weather conversation. But first, here's a little bit about where we are. I'm with my good friend and great meteorologist Joe Rayo at the weather station at Belvedere Castle in Central Park. Ever since 1919, we've been recording each and every hour all sorts of weather information that has been vital. This is so important. It lets us establish vital benchmarks for daily forecasting and larger events, events like Superstorm Sandy, which hit in October of 2012. And we ended up getting those very potent, powerful southeasterly and southerly winds, which took all of that water and literally like launched it and pushed it right over Long Island, Staten Island, Brooklyn, flooding everything out. In fact, the storm surge in Battery Park at the Brooklyn Tunnel reached 14 feet, shattering a record set in 1821. And the Jersey Shore was crushed as well. This new era in storms shows us just how dangerous they can be. A fact storm chaser Nicholas Isabella is well aware of. I absolutely love it. I, I can't go a day without checking the forecast models. Isaias landed August August 2nd of 2020, and Isabella saw firsthand the damage that left nearly a million people in our area without power. And then late last summer, boy, the catastrophic one two punch of Henri and Ida, less than two weeks apart, a bounty for a storm chaser, if not a little bit frightening. That flooding was definitely one of the scariest things. Collectively, Henri and Ida caused some of the most devastating flooding this area has ever seen. I haven't never seen something like this before. Cars are being submerged. All it's kind of terrible. Central Park recorded a record smashing three plus inches of rain in an hour. Rushing waters flooded subways and streets. It trapped people in their homes. Now, we have something that, we, that we've recently launched uh, called First Alert Weather. We're really, really trying to get the word out as early as we possibly can, giving people a heads up about hazardous weather that's moving in. The technology that we have today, weather has changed so much in the last 10 or 50 years in, in, in alerting people and warning people about what is coming coming their way. Now, in order to predict all that extreme weather, we rely upon multiple weather models for guidance. And our senior weather producer, Giorgio Panetta, well, he's in the weather office right now with a closer look. Jay? That's right, Lonnie. Modelology is a big part of what we do. Some of the big players we're constantly using to help us predict big storms, the European, the NAM, the graph, the her. Now, how do these visualize? Spaghetti plots. These are our visualization of the numerical weather output statistics. And that's really what modelology is, is. It's really nothing more than math problem. You get a big algorithm, and there are hundreds of data points all over the country, in the ocean, up to the upper levels of the atmosphere. Those are plugged in, along with our current conditions, to help predict the future. And that's really what it's all about. This, tech, this sort of idea came around in the early 1900s. Wilhelm Bjerknes was a Norwegian scientist who started the primitive math. And Louis Fry Richardson was an English scientist who was the first scientist to hand plot the weather for the next day. Now this is something I did when I was in college. It's incredibly difficult and takes a long time. And with the invention of computers in the 50s, data became more available and things just became a lot faster. And that's really what First Alert is all about. It's about keeping you up to date of any changes in your weather and things you need to know that affect your life. But most importantly, it's to keep you safe. My man, Giorgio, thanks very much. We're going to be right back with more on what First Alert weather means to you. It's snowing in the Catskills, but not a cloud in the sky down the shore. We'll show you why weather is so different across the tri-state area. Plus, I buy people kitty litter for Christmas. <laughs> keeping kitty litter in your car? Find out how it could save you during a winter storm.